Hello, once again, I'm uh, giving you this update on Wednesday, uh, day after we passed um, a balanced budget. A balanced budget with some challenges, some serious challenges, in it, both in terms of expected revenues and continued uh, management of our fiscal condition on the service side. Um, this was a tough, tough budget. It's a little bittersweet to talk about it because there was much to dislike about it, regardless of your party affiliation or your ideology. Nevertheless, we were able to pass it on a simple majority Democratic vote in both houses. Uh, we had robust discussions in both houses and with the governor. Uh, I met personally with the governor yesterday uh, about some of my concerns in the budget, uh, and he was receptive and open-minded, as I found him always to be. Um, this budget, as you know, we had a $25 billion problem uh, shortfall out of a $85 billion budget. Um, when the governor took over, Governor Brown. Uh, in March, we addressed half of those problems with large cuts, particularly in health and human services. And then we've tried to get four Republican votes to continue the taxes that we've all been paying for the last two years that sunset two days from now as I speak. Um, those sunsets in the taxes would have resulted in about $9 billion of continued revenue that we won't have. So fortunately for us, all of the Department of Finance's projections are that revenues are significantly up. It appears that the economy is improving, although I know it's not for a lot of people who are unemployed and underemployed and continue to struggle with their housing costs and transportation costs and others. So um, not minimizing the continued struggle we have vis -vis our economy individually and collectively, it does look like revenues up for state and local government. So we pass the budget, it's balanced, the governor will sign it um, either today or tomorrow. And we'll move on. Um, but we have many, many challenges ahead of us. Uh, we need to do significant reform when it comes to fiscal responsibility. Uh, the, the bill I have on multi-year budgeting continues to move. The bill that I have with Senator Wolk and Senator Huff about performance-based budgeting, which would make, I think, for greater efficiency in how we deliver services. All those things we continue to work on. Pension reform, we really need to address our long-term sustainability of our pension obligations to both state and county and local employees and also the taxpayer. Um, so those things are going to continue to be a struggle. Um, I continue to think the initiative system has to work for ordinary citizens and we have a number of bills in that regard. So I guess the message for today as we embark on the 4th of July weekend is, um, as always in this nation's history, is uh, we have tremendous opportunities still, um, obviously tremendous challenges in this economic time in California in this country. So as Jefferson said all those years later, or all those years ago, um, during the first Fourth of July celebration when he wrote those, those amazing words in the Declaration of Independence, he also said that the price of democracy and the price for Americans is eternal vigilance. So I would remind you of that as you have a happy, wonderful Fourth of July weekend with your family that uh, we as Americans still have much to do to make sure that our children and future generations have all the promise and the prosperity that we've enjoyed in our lifetime. Happy Fourth of July.